Welcome to the special installment of Case in Point, produced by the University of Pennsylvania Law School. I'm your host, Steve Barnes. Today, the FCC announced a rollback of net neutrality regulations, a controversial law and policy decision by the federal government. To discuss what this means, we have with us today Herb Hovenkamp. He's a Penn Integrates Knowledge Professor, jointly appointed to the law school, as well as to Wharton here at Penn. Professor Hovenkamp, thanks so much for joining us. Today, the FCC chairman announced a rollback of regulations that govern the internet. Uh, Professor Hovenkamp, could you explain to us, please, um, what happened here? Well, the rule that has been in place until today, called net neutrality, treats uh, treats the internet like a public utility, which means it's subject to a kind of regulation that prohibits firms from discriminating among customers, prohibits firms from providing faster or preferred access to particular customers who might be paying more or prohibits companies from simply kicking certain firms off the market altogether. Under the new set of rules, these practices will be left much more to market forces, which means that the individual Internet service providers are going to have more discretion to decide whether they want to do some of these things. And that's why some independent companies, like Netflix, for example, are quite opposed to the change that happened today. So if you're an uh, an independent content producer like Netflix, would you or should you be concerned about one of the big broadband providers, uh, as well as content producers, um, making their content more accessible to consumers? I think the biggest concern, so, so the answer is yes, I think the biggest concern will be from Internet service providers like Comcast that also owns the, own their own programming. Comcast owns NBC, which has programming, and some of that competes with Netflix. And so there would be chances, for example, that uh, Comcast would discriminate against a company like Netflix or in favor of its own, its own subsidiary, NBC, Uh, And furthermore, there aren't any other restrictions. Uh, There were restrictions placed on NBC, but those expired or are expiring this year. Uh, So those are the fears of some independent programmers. And the smaller the independent programmer is, uh, the greater those fears will be because those programmers will have less uh, bargaining power. Do you agree or disagree with the characterization of those who oppose uh, the rollback of these uh, regulations that this could lead to a choking off of the Internet, whether it's, you know, streaming content or even apps, for example, being booted off um, one of these big broadband or uh, Internet providers' systems? Okay, here I think you need to distinguish two things. One is what is legally possible, and the answer is yes, it is legally possible that that kind of discrimination or choking off could occur. That doesn't mean it will occur because it may not be the profit-maximizing strategy for a certain Internet service provider to do these things. The other thing that's been going on that pulls in the opposite direction is that bandwidth has been expanding at a tremendous rate. So people have more options. Uh, There's more space available on the Internet. Uh, Something like net neutrality is critically important when there's a shortage of bandwidth because then it has to be allocated. As bandwidth becomes bigger and bigger and more and more programming uh, can get through the pipe, so to speak, then the concerns for net neutrality are smaller. And so we're just going to have to wait and see about whether uh, specific types of discrimination or exclusion actually occur. I think, uh, I'm sure within a year or so we will know that, but we don't know right now. You're an expert, a scholar in antitrust, and you take a look at this issue from that angle. Could you describe um, your take on this net neutrality debate and what has happened today from the antitrust perspective? Yep. Some people who favor the rollback, who favor abolishing net neutrality, believe that antitrust can pick up the slack. I don't think that's true. Uh, That is to say, in this particular case, 
we would be talking about the actions of a, usually of a single firm, a single internet service provider, uh, and those actions would be of the nature of a refusal to sell, a refusal to supply programming or access bandwidth for programming to a particular person, or price discrimination, charging two different groups, two different people. And antitrust does not have good tools for disciplining those things. If we have to rely on antitrust, antitrust would tolerate a great deal of discrimination by one firm against another. So I don't think antitrust is up to the job without serious modification of the antitrust laws. And frankly, I don't see that forthcoming. Right. And if I understand your response correctly, there aren't currently antitrust laws on the books that can deal with this. New laws would have to be written and passed, correct? I think so, yeah. Antitrust's law of duty to deal, which is what we're talking about here, when do the antitrust laws force firms to deal with other firms, is not very protective. I mean, most of our protection of duties to deal have traditionally come from common carrier responsibilities, which come through the regulatory laws and, uh, and you know, utilities, for example, do have electricity, natural gas, do have a duty to serve all customers. Uh, but the antitrust laws have never done a good job of providing such duties. Right. So the Obama era utility style regulation of the internet was sort of the rationale for what we had up until today when the FCC just that's, rolled its regulations back. That's correct. And so I think at, we're at a position now where we're simply going to have to wait and see. Fortunately, these rules can readily be reversed. And if uh, a year from now we see systematic exclusion or widespread exclusion, uh, it will become a political issue. And uh, a new administration, be it Republican or Democrat, could always put them back into place. So where do we go from here? What do you foresee in the wake of this announcement of the rollback of these net neutrality regulations? Uh, it seems like there's a, a fair amount of litigation and pressure that will be uh, launched in reaction to this announcement. What are your thoughts? I don't think the litigation is going to pick up the slack here. I don't, th I don't see any litigation currently that's going to impose anything similar to, uh, to net neutrality. I think most of that's going to have to await the market. Uh, the good thing about these practices is they cannot be done in secret. That is to say, if an internet service provider excludes content or discriminates against content, that will be immediately apparent. There will be customers who will raise objections write their Congress people and so on. So I think if things go south, uh, we will know about it and it will become an issue. Uh, and if not, you know, like I say, if there's enough bandwidth so that everybody can have all of the access to the internet that they need, uh, then this uh, will not have been such a bad decision. Well, Professor Hovenkamp, thank you so much for your perspective and your analysis. Uh, we really appreciate you being on this special installment of Case In Point. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.